Today we have a very, very busy day. We have we gotta work on everything over here. Hey everybody, you're watching Call the Corn Star. If you're even slightly interested in farming or just <laughs> wanna watch a 25 year old farmer get some stuff done, you're in the right place. I'm gonna try to do this in one breath. The 16 year old planter way down there needs to have the closing wheel center, then we need to update the GPS and monitor inside the John Deere. We need to update the GPS and monitor inside the 340. We need to update GPS and monitor inside both of the sprayers. We need to get the sprayer trailer tanks filled. We need to open up the mix mate, make sure everything's flowing good, get all the antifreeze and stuff out of that. Oh, I'm almost out of breath. But this needs to have the bearings gone through. We need to take air pressure, make sure nothing's broken on that. And both the seat tenders need to have gas put in them. <sighs> Okay, let's catch that. And then the GPS and monitor in the 4880 need to be updated. We need to get the real disc to just kind of up to snuff. We gotta get it greased. There's some wire wrapped around a few things. And then we need to raise these center baskets because they drag when we go down the road. And one of these disc blades is bent, so Cooper's trying to take off the nut right now because that noise bueno. about this real disc is if you get in any wire at all it just wraps and wraps and wraps and wraps so you need to carry a grinder and the tractor when we're out in the field then if you wrap wire around something it's a heck of a lot faster than that wow that took a long time but we got her out that was all of our wire really so this is our original sprayer. Right now, the GPS receiver that's up on top is running a WAS signal. That's a free service. It's like within six inch accuracy. I need to put this GPS 7500 on there because the other sprayer has a 7500 up on top. And what the 7500 can do that the 6500 can't is the 7500 can shoot up to the satellite. The satellite can ping back down over to the other sprayer. So if you've sprayed something with this sprayer, it will tell that sprayer what's already been sprayed. Ugh, there we go. This tractor's operating on watts now, so we have six inch accuracy on the tillage, which is more than accurate enough for this. Inside the cab, we have an Ag Leader in Command 800 monitor. So this is an 800. This is what implements all the guidance and stuff through it. And then we have an OnTrack 3, which is what connects up to the satellite right on top of the cab. And this has a gear motor inside of there. It's what turns the wheel and keeps us going on the direction that we have our GPS set to go at. I don't think they make the OnTrack 3 anymore. They upgraded to the Steady Steer, which is a, basically a more condensed form. It's what we have out on the John Deere. Nothing is awesome. This tractor is over 40 years old and we have perf perfectly functional auto steer on it. And what I really like about it is we can just pull all that stuff out and we can put it in a different tractor and we just keep all the wiring harnesses and then it's just plug and play. So we need it in this. Okay, good. We use it. We get done with it. Hey, go put it in the John Deere. We use the John Deere. Get done with that. Hey, go put it in the combine. I hate grease guns. I hate greasing. That's all I have to say. Well, I fired up the monitor and it went straight into this upgrade. So I have like 14 more to go. So in the meantime, while that's doing that, we're going to go hit one of the sprayers. Ugh. Updating these is pretty painless. I just went online and downloaded a file onto this. We're just going to plug it right into the thumb drive right on the side. We'll go up here. We'll go to that. And then that'll light up here in a second. Right there. And then that's the one we need. Then we wait. Oh, no, they're making me scroll to the bottom. Okay, 8.1, we're good. Two down, one to go. I learned a long time ago, you always want to keep your update with the tractor for a few days because it never fails once you get starting for some reason. The download that said it went through did not go through. And then you got to go home and go get a whole new update and stuff. So if you have it with you, you can just fix it right there on the spot. They got the real disc done. In the meantime, now we're going to hook up to our little white disc. I don't know what this is. Uh, 272 maybe? All the number stuff is written off of it. But we're going to use this 
to fix some waterways and some washouts. Coop's running into the parts store to get some parts for that disc. In the meantime, we just got some bad news. The 400, our Polaris Explorer 400, the transmission, I guess, is out in it. And it's like a $2,000 fix for a $500 four-wheeler. So that four-wheeler is officially done. The problem is we use that four-wheeler to mount a GPS globe up on top so that way we can boundary our fields. And for some reason, our boundaries from last year have completely disappeared, so we need to reboundary our fields. <laughs> and we don't have anything to do it with. So I'm headed over to my neighbor Scott's. He has a ranger, and he runs Ag Leader as well, so his is already set up to run boundary stuff with, and he said he's not using it. So we're gonna go steal his ranger. Fun fact, see that big grain bin right there? Right there? I built that thing when I was in high school. There she be. I didn't wanna stick the camera in Scott's face, but we got her. And now we gotta get our GPS monitor put inside of there, and we gotta hook up the internet receiver, that thing. So Scott runs egg later stuff, and it's already plumbed up for everything, so this should be pretty simple. We're just gonna put it up here on this ball mount, and then we just gotta plug the wires in the back. Grab the 1200 monitor out of the John Deere. Do I do this up breaking it? Is there like a button? Yeah, how'd you do that? Just gotta know the touch. Very gentle. <laughs> okay. What did you do? You take your finger right here where this blue is, and you push it down. <laughs> push it down. Oh. Our engine oil tank ran empty for the diesel engines anyway. We got 55 gallons of new 1540 oil. Both of the sprayers are in here. Dad and Coop are gonna be pulling all the oil filters off of them, draining the oil, and putting new inline fuel filters and new big fuel filter. Last year, well, yeah, before we put it away, we uh, put the fatties on it and uh, we drove it a little bit. It's gonna bell check to make sure they're not loose. Got her working, we're gonna go boundary these fields now, just mapping the edges. Looks like Cooper's fixing his first waterway of the year. Listen to that old 903 Cummins. It's a little tacky yet. It's getting there though. Ooh, that was a rock. So what we're gonna do is use that more aggressive disc to get it kind of mostly done. Then we'll come in with the real disc after it's kind of dried up a little bit. That does a really good job of mellowing it out. And then we'll be able to just plant right on top of that or seed grass. Whoa, that was no es bueno, no es bueno, mini, mini. <laughs> Looks like Cooper is running around the sprayer here. He's greasing all the spindles, greasing the whole machine. We just got done changing the engine oil, fuel filters, two fuel filters, two air filters, one oil filter. Hey, Ellie. There you go. Uh, Cooper and I are trying to change a heater core line. We had one last year, the last day, spring a leak, so we plugged it to get through to get it home, but now we're replacing it. Mapping a field and mapping a field well are two very different things. I've never boundaried fields before, so I had a little bit of a learning curve last night. I just monkeyed around, 
tried mapping the field around dad's house and the field west of his house just to kind of learn what to do what not to do how to go about the approaches and stuff it, it's it seems really simple but the more you like anything the more you dive into it the more complicated it gets so i have a really big day today because scott needs his ranger tomorrow because he has some fields he needs to finish mapping of his own so i have to do 18 fields today and i did not get two fields done in like two hours last night so hopefully i have the learning curve out of the way <laughs> we're gonna try our best and we're gonna get as much done as we can we're gonna start with our furthest east farms we'll get those done then we'll go all the way to the other side of our farming operation to the furthest west then we'll hit the furthest north and everything else is close to home. First farm on the list is Winona's. Now it's gonna be really windy today, so I'm gonna do my best to keep the wind out. I apologize. It took about two hours, but we made a bunch of guidance lines. It is incredibly windy out here. Next farm up is the north side of Mary Luce, and then we got across the road, which is the south side. Probably should blow out the radiator on this sprayer here. Just hard to tell if it's dirty or if it's just the way it's stained, but I'm gonna check it out just to make sure. Oh, I'm not making very good time. It's two o'clock and I've got three fields done. And I gotta stop and get lunch yet. Wendy out there. All right, we got Scott here. He's a professional mechanic. I'm the professional hand tooler, handler. Where are you going, Wendy? <laughs> See if you can pry out on that side somewhere, maybe. In here, Scott, or do yeah. I go back further? See if you can just see if it'll wiggle out or whatever you can get in there to... Makes a deal. No, I must have it on wrong. Now what did I do? <laughs> Something don't make sense here. <laughs> Right. I did want to give Scott a big, big thank you for coming down. I know he is busier than all get out right now. To take time to come down and take care of the oil leak on this tractor. Ellie, are you trying to lay an egg, Ellie? Are you trying to lay an egg? <laughs> well, now we had Cooper. He had a little breakdown. <laughs> this little bracket right here, bro. So he's going to take that apart, try to re-beef it, build it bigger and stronger than factory. Cooper is grinding the surface, so when he puts the other piece on top, it'll be clean to weld. Next up is Carol's. Right as I pulled up, Presley just called. I guess Carol's cow got out and he was in the middle of the highway. Presley was able to get him behind the house. So now we're gonna try to wrangle him up into the pen again. There he is. Oh, that's a bull. <laughs>
looking too. I was looking, I'm like, oh, I'll bet there's a gate there. Yeah, he wasn't slowing down. <laughs> what do I gotta do to tighten this up? I know. Ho, oh, hi! No, 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 no. <laughs> you wanna shut it off and we'll tighten some of these up? We have a code black. Got a low front tire. And then we got another low front tire on the other side. We have a little patch kit. Our dad does. So it's got the tire all soaked up right now. Looks like maybe like a little baby corn stalk or something. Is that what kind of it looked like? Uh, I don't know. It felt like a little hard rock or something almost. Like a little, no. it could be a corn stalk. It just broke off right on the stub, but. I don't think that's the only one in this tire, so. No. <laughs> so we got a little patch kit. We're just sticking a little plug inside there. Hey, there's another one right there. Ooh, <laughs> Too far? Okay. <laughs> We ended up putting six plugs in both front tires. You dirty dog. Let's try that. Ron's also made an appearance on the farm. He's on the Hanson farm right now. He's smoothing out waterways that we have not been able to pass through in the past. He's got a couple more up over the hill. That farm, once those are done, we'll be able to start at the gravel road at the end. We'll be able to plant the entire mile all the way through to this side. And that is going to speed up the efficiency of that farm like crazy. You already got the bush farm done. You got some stuff down there in that corner. And you got a big waterway up there knocked out. So now this farm is way smoother. We are going to run the water truck over to Cole's place. We need to fill up with water. So I figured we might as well go do that. We need to put fuel in this truck too. It's getting kind of low. Waiting for the boys. I'm not sure where they're all at right now. So we'll go over there and see what we can get done over there. Been at it for a solid 10 hours or so. The backs of my hands are absolutely sunburned. But I just found something pretty cool. This is an old clay tile. <laughs> it's all silted in and stuff. But that's how the water drains underground. This is basically the drain for the field or the old drain for the field. And it was not very deep. Either that or it was very deep and a lot of soil has eroded away over the years. I'm guessing it's a combination of both. But they would have dug these by hand. You see people like plant tomatoes and stuff in these nowadays but that's what those are we got a brand new motor there so we're kind of running it a little bit slow to kind of break it in i think the boy said this one's supposed to do 375 gallons a minute update 12 37 in the morning just got done mapping put on over 180 miles on the ranger that's just going around the outsides of the field i haven't eaten lunch today i've drank two-thirds of a bottle of water and i'm probably super dehydrated but i, I don't feel hungry so that's kind of weird you know when you're on the merry-go-round for a while and then when you get off your head's kind of like spinny but you're fine but your eyes are kind of weird i got that right now i've been just whipping around on that ranger all day the lights on the ranger aren't very good so i ended up just carrying this light the whole time once it got dark it actually worked pretty good i was able to shine it right on the edge of where i wanted to go so i could see so this is what i was doing like this is the field right behind my house right now all these black lines are what i was making so i'm just outlining the edges of the fence the edges of the grass that's the windmill right there and then the driveway so there's just a lot in every field. Let's see if the deer is still in the front yard, hey guys. Hey, where are you going? Come back. Good morning. <laughs> We're gonna hopefully get some spraying done today. Yeah, I hope the wind doesn't start. I didn't know I was supposed to do anything today. Well, I think if we're like this, we should be okay. 
Well, we got a little issue here with the new to us sprayer. Went to hook the hose up. This here is a female end. The other sprayer has a male end sticking out, and I don't think I really have to explain the difference. But we need the male end sticking out here, and then slide the female end over. So we're going to have to go down to the shop, see if we can find a male end to put on here. Oh, it's always something, isn't it? Always something. Where'd Coop go? Ellie, come on, girl. Anyhow, we're gonna have to run down to the shop, see what we can find. Well, sometimes you just gotta be a MacGyver and make things to work. Ha <laughs> ha, look at this. Male end, male end, male end. Slide it into the female end. Well, that didn't work worth a hoot with that. That's kind of a loose son of a gun. What is the deal there? Is there not an O-ring in there? Dang, there is not a O-ring. What in the world? <laughs> Uh, I need an O-ring now. I'll need to get an O-ring up here, a bigger seal. But this is straight water, so we just want to put enough in it to make sure everything's working. What was that? There might be my O-ring. I think that's the O-ring I need. Oh! We are ready and I forgot what Cole said to make sure and if it don't work then you got to redo something but I'm sure that's right so I'm going to take his word for it. What's this water? Uh, come on. Uh, yeah we'll go with the straight. Uh, sounds good to me. All right. Oh there we are. We're going to do an AB line. You know it. How many gallons of water and I got to remember how to redo all that stuff. This sprayer that I'm in is a Hagee. STS 10 so it's a thousand gallon tank this is the one that we bought this winter I guess Cole said I can run it I guess if Cooper wants to run it I'm not gonna complain but uh, looks like we get to run it today so far I like it haven't ran nothing on it yet but uh, I have ran the air conditioning you know it's funny you run these things for quite a while during the spring and then when you let it sit for a year you just a lot of monitor stuff just got to get a feel of the machine again so I'd rather do that with no chemicals in it or anything so we're gonna try to run two sprayers last year we were running crazy running one and which Cole I think ran it probably 90% of the time last year it was a long season so we're gonna try running two this year to try to help the pressure a little bit and try to get to the weeds at a very 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 timely matter and last year it was windier than all get out at times you might be able to spray early morning till noon and then you'd have to sit it out. Cooper had a flat tire. We called our tire repair man. He said, I'll head your way in five minutes. I kid you not, he's been here maybe 20 minutes after we made the phone call. This is when you look at your dad right now and tell him the valve stem broke. <laughs> Remember when you go home tonight and your mom wants you to pick up? Mom, I've been working all day. See how that goes. Yeah. And then run. <laughs> and out the door. Yeah. We're really glad to find these guys. Our other tire man retired after 22 or 24 years of farm service, delivery, whatever you want to say. Man, almighty Cole, I didn't think they'd ever get done. Cooper came up with a flat tire. He gave him a call. 40 minutes after Cooper called him, he was already here and got the tire changed. Sounds like we're on their speed dial, but that's, that, that was very, very nice. We know them guys are busy, busy. Especially and, this time of year. Yeah. Well, speaking of busy, that went fast, but we've been fighting the sprayer today. The right spot, for some reason, we have two of them that are not producing spray for whatever reason. So Pete Youngblood's coming out. He's gonna bring in a couple new ones that we can replace with these. The other sprayer has an O-ring that was leaking, so I went and got a new one of those. That one should be ready to go. The next thing is we're gonna try the mix mate. First fire up oh, of the year. Yeah. This, this could be interesting. It's I, amazing how stuff just breaks when you don't use it, you know? I know. <laughs> That's why I get up every morning and work. Uh, we're not gonna let you near the mix mate because it doesn't <laughs> like you. Uh, but I was just thinking it was the first was it this nozzle we we need to change the yeah one? These, these two okay i was thinking i don't want to yeah. have Pete change the wrong one inside of here there's just a little basically it just goes back and forth it's like a little plunger you know when you put a straw into a glass of water and then you put your finger over the end you pull it out and the water stays in there it, it's kind of the same effect so when it shuts off it just puts its finger over the straw and it won't let anything come out and then while it's going it just goes in and out and so then it allows it to pulsate but for some reason those aren't going. We cleaned them out. They're they're clean. 
don't know what's going on. Sprayer's got a main tank filter right there, but then on the boom coming into each individual section, we got these little inline filters. And so there's no ring in there. And for whatever reason, the 32 or something stretches it out and it doesn't make a tight seal around that lip. And then this will just drip, 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 drip. And it gets all over everything right here. Front and O-ring is a little too small. I was able to stretch it on. I think that's gonna work. Was the screen clean? Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing in there. Good. Well, I checked them yesterday, they were clean. So what the mix made is, is chemical mixing made fun. Because you don't actually have to measure anything by hand. It's all done through a set of flow meters here that are tied to a computer inside of the stainless steel box that talks to my tablet that has an app on it. So I just make prescriptions of everything. So like right here, I'm going to be making a 66 acre batch. All my prescriptions are already made. Just gonna pull exactly how much of everything I need out of these big bolt totes in the back and run it through. And I don't have to touch anything other than the key to this pump to make sure that my stuff is plumbed in the right direction. And then I hit go on this. So I'm just making sure right now that my flow meters are going to the tank that I want them to go to. So that way if we want to pull two quarts of that one, we're not actually pulling it from that one. And and we're just going to fire it up and make sure everything's running the way it's supposed to. I'm not used to this high-tech stuff, and it really isn't high. Well, yes, it is. It is very high-tech, but for me, it doesn't use computers and all that good stuff, I guess. I do, I do, I don't. Moment of truth, I guess. Well, I know that will start because I already ran it. You silly, silly goose. Knock on wood, we're spraying, it's working. Got 20% left in the tank now. Won't be long, we'll be filling up. We got from right here over to that house left. Probably like 40 acres by the time we get this ran off. It doesn't take very long to do. The 100 acre farm, we're on tabletop right now. We call it that because it's flat. Back and forth. It sounds like dad's still over at the bend site. He is waiting for Pete to show up with two new sensors to put on the rows then he should be going. We've got a couple hours of daylight left. It'd be nice to get a couple hundred acres done, but we'll do what we can. Just filled up my second load. Got dad filled up at the same time. He went and headed over to Melvin's. What are we caught on right here? There. He used to do all the spraying, and before we kind of really had a, a good auto steer system, and so He's not super familiar with the system and the sprayer yet, even though it's the same as what's in the tractor, but he has to relearn it every year, which is completely understandable. But when you're wanting to make sure you're not spraying through any waterways or missing areas of the field, you want to make sure it's done right. So it's a little bit of a Papa Bear moment for me to hand it over to Little Bear in this circumstance to trust that he's doing it right. But I have confidence he will. And in all honesty, if he misses a little bit, we can always come back and fix it. It's just it's more annoying than anything, but it's not the end of the world. The big thing dad tends to do, right now I have a perfectly straight AB line. So I like snapped a point here and then one at the end of the field. So it makes it perfectly straight. Sometimes he comes in and he hits this button up here and then it like defaults it to what's called smart path and smart path literally follows the exact path that you drove on your last pass so if you moved two inches that way it moves you two inches that way so your line looks like that going across the field well you drive by one of his fields that he's doing and somehow or another he managed to get it in smart path and you got 40 acres of the field that looks a little bit wobbly <laughs> So I just don't want him to get into that with the sprayer because when the sprayers are not super accurate on those little two inch micro turns because they sway so much. And so when you get on smart path in a sprayer, it just leaves a lot of gaps on the edges unless you're overlapping like three feet, which we're pretty much running like on a six inch overlap. So I just don't want that. Just got done with the first day of spraying. Be honest, it was kind of nerve wracking trying to get used to all the controls again. Just the machine kind of in a bad field to start out with a lot of drawaways. So I don't know if we got things quite set right. So now I'm worried, did I kill some waterways? 
in areas I don't know but probably should have started out in a little nicer field to kind of get to know the machine but we're gonna put everything away that are talking maybe rain this weekend The first day of spraying, never, never, ever, 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 ever in the history of our farm or the history of any farm ever has gone well. That's just when all the problems come up, but we got the first day done, so things are better. Now we just have a lot of stuff to fix, and we have probably like a four-acre waterway that needs to be replanted, but we're not going to talk about that right now. <laughs> I'm going to go get some food, going to get some water, throw some salt in me, go to bed, and get some sleep. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.